You're listening to Glove Up or Shut Up on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Yes, that's true, but I do like one point that you raised that I think also suits McGregor quite well, and I've witnessed this firsthand from being at the bar during a Conor McGregor pay-per-view, is there are a lot of people who will pay to see him lose. And some of the things that I heard people say during his fight with Chad Mendez, like, go get that potato-eating so-and-so, and things that I won't repeat that are in so-and-so. It's like, wow, Conor McGregor has really... It just irritated the heck out of these people. They want him to get beat so badly. It's like you have either one complete set of just total devotion to him, like the Irish fan base and the people in Ireland that'll fly all the way here to see him, and you have the complete opposite, and they're both so passionate about it, they'll both pay just to see him. And and, and part of this is, can Connor take... uh whatever that audience is that drove his buy rate with uh, Nate Diaz to, I don't know, what was it, 1.6 or something like that? Yeah, 1.6 and trickling up from that point. And, and, and so, you know, that audience is still, you know, so so much of a smaller percentage than than what they believe they can get. So, so McGregor is going to have to tap into something with a lot more mainstream non hardcore fans and and how does he do it uh is he is he going to get what's the vehicle that's going to help him help him him do that like and and, and that it's pro- it's probably just the fact that that people are still probably interested in Mayweather um his fight with Andre Berto did a terrible buy rate by Mayweather standards um and so it, you know do people still care about Floyd i think they do care to an extent but really what's going to uh what's going to be i think the um kind of the trigger for this thing is how much uh, mcgregor actually does does uh how the how the people respond to him because if they feel like he's a big bigger deal than he is today and they, they have to for this thing to succeed it could it could very well do do really good business. I don't uh, that that five million dollar number seems really high to me. I mean five million y- units. Um, but then again, like I thought, you know, pa- uh, Pacquiao and Mayweather was probably going to do like two five, and it did like four four. So it's it's just you know it, it's all about the hype. And I heard that they're going to do a tour um, across a few cities uh, when it comes to press conferences and stuff. So that's kind of the beginning. Um, and it's also something they did with, uh, I believe it was Mayweather and Canelo. And that fight did gigantic business too. Um, so it's probably, uh, I think they're using that blueprint. One thing I have heard about that 4 million plus that Mayweather Pacquiao did is that a lot of those numbers are based on the attendance at bars because they bought a license for the capacity of the venue knowing that everybody who didn't pay $100 to order it at home would come to the bar and watch it and that they're basically in a lot of places the streets were empty that night because nobody was at the bowling alley nobody was at the movie theater everybody was trained to pack into one of these bars that was holding that fight yeah for sure i mean it's just when you create that they call it uh fear of missing out and this is kind of like a an acronym for um that that when you when you create uh Comp- when you have a business where uh, it's it's a lot of it is sort of user driven, like think of like a social network. <laughs> so they call it fear of missing out or FOMO, F O M O. And really, what they're trying to create here is not necessarily like they have certain folks in the bag, right? Like there's going to be you know a, a percentage of that audience that just by the mere fact that Mayweather is fighting, that McGregor is fighting. And that it's a big sporting event, like they're in, like they're they're locked in. But the people that they have to tap into are the people who, when their neighbor starts talking about something, and they go, "Oh, I don't really know about that. I need to do some research." That's the person who they need to tap into, which is that person that's just like, "I don't want to miss out on what everyone else is doing." And so they did that for May for Mayweather Pacquiao. And they're, they're going to have to figure out uh, the way to do it for this fight, too. 
essentially it's the water cooler fight. It's the one that you're going to want to be able to talk about the next day at the office and know what you're talking about because you saw it yourself. Yeah, and and I mean, think about that number though. Let's five million buys, which probably I don't I don't know I don't know how many numbers of of heads that you, is it is it going to be three people to a home, five people to a home. So you're really talking about numbers that are going to be closer to something like the NBA Finals, um, closer to something like you know probably not quite, but you know the Super Bowl. Uh, I don't know what the Oscars uh, do in ratings these days, but, you know, something to that level of where people go, okay, this is the one night I'm going to get, you know, going to go to my friend's house and we're going to bring food and we're going to have drinks and, and we're going to sit there and watch this thing for however long it lasts. And they have to, they have to feed that. That's what they're trying to create. Yes, or they're going to find the local bar or the local restaurant that's guaranteed they're showing it. And even if it's like $25 cover to get in, they're going to go two hours early, they're going to get a seat, and they're going to stay for the whole night to watch it and have all the drinks they want because then they don't have to fix the food and the drinks themselves at home and they won't miss out. Yeah, that I mean, that's, that's the other way to do it for sure. What about movie theaters? How would they calculate that if they show it on a closed circuit like uh, Cineplex or what have you? So I I actually don't think that the bars are counted in the same way that um, like I think it's a different metric that they they don't actually count it in that large big number um, and movie theaters as well is I think it's more a, a gross like they just say oh this is how much you know like, like for instance they'll say here's the gate for um, for the T-Mobile Center and then here is you know if they decide to show it. Uh, uh, in the old, the old, the old school way where they just rent a venue and then they show the fight there and people buy tickets to that venue. And they'll say, that's the, there's a gate for that. And this is how much we did in movie theaters. So they don't really say like, you know, this is how many tickets we sold. They do it more in like, uh, you know, uh, more, more in like sort of a, of a gate style of number. Now, does it matter that the 12 ounce gloves, does that benefit McGregor in any way or is that more of a hindrance or does it really matter? I mean, just the the mere fact that he's got to put on fingerless uh, fingerless gloves, um, it's it, the like the whole thing really like right like so if you think about it, what did the UFC get out of any negotiations other than Mayweather Promotions, which is which is not as successful of a uh, a, a promotion as the UFC. Um, what, what did the UFC get out of this? I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out. The, the, you know, to, to McGregor, the smaller the glove, the better. Is it 10 or is it 12? I heard 12. Uh, okay. It might, it might be 12. Um, but, you know, like, it's a boxing match, so you're obviously going to have to use gloves. Um, but there's no, there's, uh, there's no UFC fights on the undercard, which is like, the dumbest thing ever because if you really wanted to increase the buy rate even ever so slightly you know give me anderson silva and roy jones jr on the undercard guys just Um, to jump in real quick i checked bleacher report they say 10 ounce gloves oh yeah okay okay it's 10 i mean the smaller the glove the better for for may for uh, mcgregor um but again, like he's he's not he's used to what are UFC gloves like four ounces or something? Yes. Um, so you know, I think his power is going to be slightly negated by having to wear boxing gloves for sure. Now, do you think the um, that money Mayweather? Do you think he's lost any part of his power base that he that he's known for? For I'm not saying he's knocking people out in the first round, but he does back in the day. Like we saw him knock out Pacquiao. Do you think now that he's quote unquote coming out of retirement for this fight, does he lose a bit of that power? Um, he didn't. I mean, he he knocked out. Let's see, he knocked out Victor Ortiz, but that mm-hmm. was because um, Victor Ortiz was headbutting him, and the referee was trying to get Victor Ortiz to fight, and Victor Ortiz kept wanting to hug Mayweather, and so May so May after one hug, and he came back for another hug. Mayweather was like, nope, uh, here here here's a here's a two piece with biscuit, uh, <laughs> and you're out. Um, and then he's also knocked out Ricky Hatton, and he knocked out Ricky Hatton with a. Uh, Ricky Hatton kind of came in uh, and rushed him, and he just kind of stepped aside and threw a and threw a check hook. But outside of that, he hasn't knocked out anybody uh, that I can remember. 
Um, I, you know, he, here's what's interesting about Mayweather, right? So during the Pacquiao fight, I'm pretty sure Mayweather was like, okay, I see what this guy has. He, there, there's, there's no way he, he can really touch me. Um, and that, and some, a lot of that has to do probably with just, you know, Pacquiao being, uh, uh, not in his prime and Mayweather was still close enough to his prime. But in that, in seeing that Mayweather still decided to fight safely against Pacquiao, like Pacquiao's fighting with a bum shoulder and it's clear that they are at different levels at this point in their career and Mayweather still fought a very safe fight. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what that means for the McGregor fight. Maybe he'll come in a little bit more confident and really want to slap McGregor around, which he probably could. But something tells me that he's still going to fight a very cautious fight, especially early on because of just because of the unknown. Like that's how he's fought his entire career. That's why he's going to be 50 and 0. Um, and you know, I, 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 I also kind of think that there's a good chance that not to say that Mayweather wants to give away any rounds or anything, but 